Hello and welcome back to Continental Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. Joining me today is Michael McCubbin and for his Continental Club debut Ooh. is Sam Obaseki. Welcome aboard. He has had the day from hell yeah, yeah, with yeah. doctors and his ankle. Yeah, don't want to You've had an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I have. I don't really want to talk about it, you know, because it'll get me kind of upset. Fair, yeah. fair. And you know what won't? Continental Club. Hey. With the topic today being Maurizio Pochettino and what he should do next. Because Cameron Smith 10 asked exactly that question. Which club should Poch go to next? Bayern is looking the most likely at the moment. But before we get stuck into that, just a quick reminder to subscribe to EuroFootball Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss a video. But we have to clarify that, you know, Bayern, uh, Bayern could have well have announced Poch as their new manager by the time this video goes live. So we could be outdated. We're actually filming this on a weird time of Thursday evening just because of how the schedules work this week. So it could well be announced by then. Pochettino was obviously fired by Spurs on Tuesday, pretty instantly replaced by Mourinho. And we talked whether, about whether that is a good appointment on Sunday Vibes in terms of Mourinho to Spurs, but now we need to focus on where Pochettino goes next. And there are a few options, McCubbin, but it does seem yeah. likely that it will be Bayern Munich. Yeah, I mean, the timing just couldn't have been better really for Bayern, could it? Obviously Kovac was uh, not let go, but um, resigned kind of before he was forced out a couple mm. of weeks ago, wasn't he? Mm. Um, and Flick's been um, at the helm ever since. And he's actually had quite a good start. Obviously, that 4-0 win over Dortmund, um, which, you know, Bayern, it's just kind of a formality for them, isn't it, at the Allianz? But nevertheless, a very big win um, in the title race. Uh, obviously, beat Olympiacos in the Champions League as well. So, generally very positive. Both clean sheets, both uh, comprehensive victories. Uh, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge has also been very... Um, um, complimentary of him he as has, well. Uh, said something like, oh, I've got it down here actually, impressive con concept of training and tactics, uh, handling of the players is very good, all this kind of stuff. But like, I mean, that's, that to me, I feel is just what the Bayern hierarchy will say when a yeah, new person's yeah, yeah. in place, especially when they've had quite a good start with, in terms of results. Mm. Um, actually, when it comes down to it, are they actually going to back him over Pochettino? I'm not so sure. Mm. Like, I mean, he was Kovac's assistant after all. Like, how? How different is he actually going to be? I can't remember the last time an assistant stepped up um, and lasted long term. Um, I might be, you know, let me know in the comments if, the if last there time are any I examples. Think it's Tito Villanova, but then yeah. obviously he had to step down because of illness. But yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, in slightly different situation as well. But it wasn't like Pep left, you know, under a cloud or exactly, anything. Exactly, exactly. Um, so. Uh, and I mean, I guess Craig Shakespeare did all right at Leicester, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that, that was due. Who thought play. he'd come <laughs> yeah, up to no. it, yeah? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the last we will hear about Craig Shakespeare on this channel. Um, but uh, as for Pochettino, though, um, yeah, it seems it, it, do, it does seem like a good fit, doesn't it? Um, I think Sky reported that uh, he is high on their on, on Bayern's list, maybe at uh, kind of the top top of the list for, for their kind of long term replacement um, of Kovac. Um, although apparently no contact's actually been made between the club um, and Pochettino. Um, and also he's got a, a clause in his, uh, in his contract with Spurs that uh, his compensation of 12.5 million euros, mm. which is, well, 12.5 million pounds, sorry, that's paid over six months, that would be terminated if he does get a job in, within six months. Very so, sneaky. Leave so, leave so, yeah. He's so sneaky. <laughs> How I mean, can you do that? But I mean, I guess you kind of have to have one of those things, don't you? If you, you're, you're hiring Jose Mourinho on 15 million yeah, a year. That's not um, so. But I guess if Pochettino does decide to take a six month break, which, mm. you know, is possible, um, then that, that plan just kind of falls by the wayside, doesn't mm. it? But assuming he does get the Bayern job, which, which could have happened, um, yeah, it does seem like a good fit, doesn't it? Uh, Bayern is, you know, they've, they've had a fairly aging squad for a few years, but in the last kind of 18 months, um, their kind of moves in the transfer market have actually brought the squad age down. Obviously, I think there's only five players in that squad now who are over the age of 28. Yeah, it's really um, young, so it's yeah. primed for uh, a manager like Poch to come in. It's, it's probably, they're probably around the same kind of squad age that, that Tottenham were when he um, arrived at White Hart Lane back in 2014. And obviously there are so many young talents there like Coman, who's only really getting a full season under his belt now. Serge Gnabry's obviously on fire. The defence is looking um, very young, very exciting. Obviously Kimmich. Um, I mean, yeah, the list, I mean, the, the, you don't have, don't, have, don't, have, yeah, don't have to <laughs> list, list it. And it's, and it's also a team which, at least in Europe, uh, has, you know, underperformed for, for a few years now. So there's, there's a ceiling there uh, at, at Bayern, obviously, he would be expected to come in and win Bundesliga titles straight off the bat, um, which is not something that he's had to do in a job before. True, but true. there is, 
yeah, there is still uh, a ceiling there. And obviously his, his run to the Champions League final with Spurs serves him in good stead in that sense. Um, that can only count for him. Uh, but I don't know, having said that, if I was Poch and there was the possibility of waiting it out for Zidane to maybe mess up the Ooh. second half of this season, I would maybe hold out for it. I don't know, like, I just think that's... For Pochettino, I feel like that's that's maybe the dream job. Um, Fair. I mean, uh, native Spanish speaker, it sort of makes sense. I think yeah. they've, they've th sort of thrown admiring glances at him beforehand. I think they'll be quite annoyed in the same way that Man United probably will be, that they didn't really go from him in March. Because yeah, sure. now what we understand is that, you know, from March it was really sort of not falling in beha but apart behind the scenes, but at least there was sort of demise that mm. had set in. And I think if they'd gone really hard for him then, when he, when these cracks were beginning to appear with Levy, the same way as Man United, and I think they could have got him and it could have been a completely different story. But now I feel like Real Madrid, good last couple of weeks at least. I think they've mm. scored 10 without the reply in their last two games. They're now joint top of La Liga on, you know, sorry, they're behind on goal difference, but they're set level on points with Barcelona. Um, look like they're now going to mm. go through in their Champions League group and players are starting to bed in a bit more, like Hazard, sure. Vinicius yeah. Junior, Rodrigo's coming to the fore a bit. But I do agree, like I feel like if Zidane doesn't get past the Champions League quarter final and the sort of murmurings behind the scene continue, then I could see him getting removed. But I actually think he's more suited to the Bayern job, just because I think Real Madrid, despite their like additions of like Mendy, Jovic, uh, players like that in the summer, Rodrigo as well, bringing the average squad age down, there's still a lot of like Old senior pros sure. like Marcelo, Ramos. For sure, but I think I think a Real Madrid side managed by Pochettino would be a big draw for a lot of Europe's mm. kind of young talent. Um, I feel there I is feel a like job to be done there. Through their rebuild for sure, well. and I, but I think I think the only thing that would maybe count against Poch, I think I think working uh, under um, Florentino Perez is, is probably you know worse than working under the Bayern hierarchy. Yeah. To be honest, oh, um, I mean yeah, probably worse than work, working under Daniel Levy as yeah. well. Oh, Brian, as as, as that was, but yeah. I know you've got a slightly left field shout left that you want to see happen. Yeah, I don't know if it's left field though because you know when managers say things like when they're under contract and stuff, you can understand it. Obviously, he used to play for Espanyol, so he's got a. a like an emotional tie to them. I think he, man he managed there as well, right? So, yeah, and captain them. So. so I understand him saying that he will never manage Barcelona, but at the same time, he just got sacked. Mm. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So I'm not saying he's desperate, but if you look at the Barcelona team at the moment, they've already lost three games. That's the same amount of games that they lost last season. And also, they're just not playing the way we normally are used to Barcelona playing. The not players don't look all. as as happy as they used to. And I think Pochettino would be the perfect person to come in just because it's a familiar scene to him, even though it's not the same as Espanol. It's a familiar scene, it's back to his native country. And also they've got younger players like Semedo, um, De Jong, Dembele, Arthur, yeah. all to embed in. And like they've got senior players that don't seem like they would cause him that much trouble, do you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Not not mm -hmm. the way that players like Ericsson and the Tonga seem to have caused him while he, while he was currently at Spurs. So um, I think Barcelona would be a good a good place for him to, to go, man. I'd I'd love to see him manage Messi. Like I'd, I think that would be a beautiful relationship. It would be good, he wouldn't would, it? He would be he would be unreal. I just realised you said native country though. He's he's Argentinian. Oh yeah, country. he's yeah. Argentinian. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Same same yeah. language. Yeah, same language. Yeah. You can say <laughs> and also yeah, with experience from living in Barcelona before. With yeah, 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 that's what yeah, I meant. Yeah, that's yeah, what I, I think that's yeah. what you meant. Um, yeah. But the I think that just the interesting thing from Pochettino's perspective is he's been fired from a top four job or well, top four club job mm. anyway. Not currently in it, obviously. But like his standing is, has remained really high. I think like yeah. most people have rightly really praised him for the job he's done there. Mm. And we go into this more on Sunday Vibe, so I don't want to cross over the, too much on that. But obviously he did a you know unbelievable job turning them into sort of consistent top four side, challenging mm. for the league on occasion, getting to the Champions League final, getting into a League Cup final. Um, so he deserves massive praise for that. I've never really seen a, a manager be fired. Because he was like fired outright. There yeah. was no like resigning element to it. He Levy, Levy got rid of him and but paid his, was 17 it, million to get rid of him and his staff. Really? Was it, so was it not a thing of where um, they kind of offered him to resign? I think I'm, Levy I heard, really wants him to resign. Few, few, Obviously, because if you can hold back 17 million, then you would if you could. Yeah. Um, but Pochettino just refused to resign and then was like, I feel it. And then Levy was like, right, I've got to go. Oh, you've got to go, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I've just never seen, I feel like in the next six months or so, potentially there's going to be a few jobs up for, up, yeah, up for yeah. I mean, not just the Bayern one, not just Real Madrid, but, um, Barcelona obviously, but Napoli looks pretty unsteady mm. with Ancelotti at the moment. Mm. 
you know, Juve, Juve, un potentially Juve well. unbeaten, but they're playing, for, they're being far from convincing as we'll get yeah. on to in our big match preview because they're playing Atalanta this, uh, this weekend. So I feel like there is plenty of options for Pochettino. Mm. Um, Ober, I've got to ask you briefly, I know we weren't delving into the sort of English side of it, but how upsetting is it for you to see Mourinho in that purple Spurs kit taking training? Um, you know what it is, yeah? I'm not, I don't feel as bad as I did when he went to United. And that's because he's been, he's been sacked three times in England now. Like, mm. And he was desperate. It was obvious that he was desperate to get back into management mm. and in London and in the Premier League. So there's not that many options for him anyway. When he was saying things about he was open to go to Arsenal, that would have annoyed me a bit a bit more, just because I know a lot more Arsenal fans. But I think him at Spurs, I'm not mad at him. I heard his press conference earlier when he said, because um, he said something a few years ago when he said that he would never manage at Spurs. Yeah. And then his answer was literally, well, I, I got biased. sacked. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. completely understandable. It's a job at the end of the day. So, yeah. you know, I kind, of, I kind of understand it. I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to feel <laughs> if he does well. Because mm. I do want him to do terribly bad, even <laughs> though I still love him. I love you, Mourinho, but I don't want you to do well in London. Yeah, I don't want you to do well in London, and that's just it. But I, I still think it's um, it's a good, it's a good last opportunity for him. I don't think if he doesn't do well, he will like be able to come back to the Premier League. Yeah, but I mean we nah, said this on Sunday, but it feels like Sunday. last last yeah, chance to lose. Last opportunity. Uh, McCubs. Yeah. On Pochettino, yeah. would you, I mean, he's now available, would you say, Oli, thanks for the service, see you later, um, or do you, are you with the United tempted. board who seem to be really backing him? Uh, I would, if I was the United board, I would offer, I mean, it's a difficult one. Uh, there's a lot of talk among some United fans um, about the idea of Oli, this kind of dream of Oli moving up to director of football yeah, and, then, and, then, well. and then having having Pochettino as manager. And that would, I'd take that, I would take that. Um, to be honest, I would whatever whatever arrangement it is, I would just take Pochettino at Man United in a heartbeat. Like I, I, I think the the the, the, the Solskjaer project. I, I I admire the patience that that the board have had um, with Solskjaer and kind of the, the patience they've had with his kind of ideas of, of, of promoting youth and stuff like that. And in the long term, I think that could be of benefit to Man United. Um, Especially with the, you know another couple of seasons down the line, no matter on, on league performance, but just kind of steadying the club and, and, and kind of bringing a you know bringing a more consistent ethos in, yeah. to, the, to the club. Um, but um, when you've got someone there who is clearly just better at you know at that even, mm. um, I, I think it would be a no, it's a no brainer really. You know, po po I mean he he you know he is he is a long term answer for any club, isn't he, Pochettino? Mm, like he it. did you know he did that at Tottenham. I, I was I was thinking earlier like. He he's at, he actually has been at Spurs for so long, yeah. half a decade. Like I was thinking, if I'd started, if I'd started at like secondary school, in the season that Poch took over at Spurs, he he'd just have left Spurs as I was like in sixth form college doing my mm. levels. Mm. Like that's how like I mean, like, it, feels it feels a long, long time. It feels long when you're like yeah. an adult. If it, the, the time feels a bit shorter, but yeah. like thinking about that, I was like, ah, that's an e that's a real era. Yeah. Like, that's an era to rival. Any we've seen, like you know, um, uh, over the last few years. Um, so it's yeah, it's, it's massive, man. And and uh, I like yeah, I think if, I think whoever gets Pochettino should be getting him with 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 the aim of, of keeping him at, at the club for five years. That's that's how bigger that's how bigger a job it could be. The only thing that I like, the only question mark I have over Pochettino is like he's definitely gonna like level up in whatever mm. job that he gets yep. now because all the jobs that are linked to him are massive massive but he's never had that pressure mm. of having to win a title or even even his time at Spurs even though a lot of people are calling ah oh, you've never won a trophy this is that you could see what he's done for the squad and for the rebuild that they they're currently uh, accomplished mm -hmm. but if he goes to Bayern you have to win a trophy you have to win the title yeah. go to Real Madrid you have to win the title you go to Man United you have to be back in the conversation. There's no excuses anymore. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see how he will stand like with that pressure. Because even when that pressure came this season, and I know it's a bit different because there was a few players that kind of wanted to leave at the end of the last season. Ericsson, Vertonghen weren't really happy, but they gave him budget. He signed players that he thought were were um, of the standard of Spurs mm. to challenge for at least a few trophies. But we've seen how that that's panned out, and I know a lot of the players mm. seem upset that he's gone gone but 
there were rumours that the training got a bit lethargic. It yeah. wasn't as, as it was like before. Sure. Like the players weren't really not backing him, but they weren't really like fighting for him as they used that to. That cult so, of Pochettino. Yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a bit interesting. Like I, I'll be very interested to see where he goes and how he deals with that pressure. For sure, and I think and I think as well, like when you're going to a bigger club as as well, um, you know, you, you you suddenly got to deal with more egos as well. If he goes yeah. to Barcelona, like I, how, how would you deal with a club which is basically run by Lionel Messi? Um, if you go to Real Madrid, you know, how are you got to deal? I guess that actually Ram there's not Madrid, to be, yeah, yeah, to be fair, to deal with those guys, deal with a situation like the situation that Bale's in Jordan, right at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously like Hazard there as well, who's you know only just coming into form. But like, you, 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 there is yeah, there's more pressure in that sense. Um, whereas you know, obviously at Spurs, he kind of created that. Yeah, he kind of created. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he created, created the expectation. He created the stars as well. Like I think mm. one of the most likable things about Spurs, especially in the first couple of years of Pochettino's reign, was that it really didn't have any stars in it. You know, mm. it was, you know, Harry Kane wasn't even really a star when mm. you know, and and he, yeah, he turned him into a star. But um, yeah, there, there, even now, to be honest, there, there's not really, there's only really been those kind of. Um, there's only really been those kind of tensions since, you know, the kind of Ericsson situation, since the old Devara situation with yeah. Tong. And it's, it's only really been after a few years when some players are like, you know what, I actually kind of want to leave. Mm. Whereas, yeah, at, at the, you know, at the superpowers, there's definitely a lot more to contend with in that sense in the dressing room. I but like it. Lance, prediction time. Where do we think Pochettino is going to be in six months? I'm going to go first. I think he's going to go to Bayern Munich. I think it might not happen until January. I think they'll give Hansi Flick a, a month or so. I think no. Pochettino probably needs a month or so to, you know, take a break as well. Mm. Clearly run down by the whole Spurs situation. Take a break, then go to Bayern. Would be my shout. My Cubs? Um, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to agree, to be honest. It seems like the most likely destination, doesn't it? It seems like the timing in terms of Kovac leaving and all that. Yes, it just seems like yeah, it just seems like the stars are aligned for that. Um, yeah, I can't really see another destination at this point. Over. Um, I like okay, Bayern looks likely, but at the same time, if I was Poch and if Poch, if you're listening, <laughs> I would say he does love football. Though. Wait <laughs> out that six months, get your peas, rejuvenate, go on holiday with the family, stuff like that. <laughs> Barcelona or Real Madrid will come calling. Yeah. Like, and just, just wait out. I want him to go to Barca, but I wouldn't mind him at Real Madrid as well. But Barcelona for me, hopefully. hopefully. I've, got, I've got a rogue shout in here. Imagine if he replaces Pochettino or Klopp in two years' time. Ooh. Oh, he will definitely be in the mix for those jobs. Yeah. If he's free. What do you oh, what, like Liverpool yeah, or yeah. City? Or City uh, when they step well. aside. Because I think Klopp's only probably got two years. I think Guardiola maybe That would less. be, that would be very bit. interesting. I think yeah, that would be that'd absolutely be fascinating. But guys, we want to hear yeah. from you guys. Where do you think Pochettino will go? Would it be Bayern, Real, Barcelona? Where else did we say? Napoli, Liverpool, United. Man City. I think we put too many options in there. So three or four, we'll put in a poll above there. Answer it, please. And yeah, we'll move on <laughs> to the big match preview. Yeah, please. <laughs> Our big match preview this weekend takes place at 2 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. And it is fifth place Atalanta hosting tabletop as Juventus. It actually starts a very tough run of fixtures for the champions, Juve, which includes games against Sassuolo and third place Lazio in the next three weeks. So it represents a very big opportunity for the rest of the league to gain on them. I mean, Inter Milan are very close as it is. Uh, McCubbs. Yeah. Atalanta, do you think they've got a chance in this one against you? Um, I mean, history would say no, because yes. I don't think they've ever beaten them in the league. No. Um, they did well, beat them in the Coppa Italia last year, I think. They three did, now. three did. So, um, so, you know, that's heartening. But, you know, if you're going to be superstitious and go off uh, kind of previous form, then no, there's no chance in hell <laughs> that they'll do it. Um, they're also not in great form either, Atalanta, to be fair. Uh, the last three games they've drawn two and lost one. I believe that loss was against Cagliari, who obviously in very good form at the mm. moment. But not brilliant from a considering you know there, there's top for expected goals. Um, I think only Man City are taking more shots per game than them in Europe's top five leagues. Obviously, this is <coughs> sorry, this is an overly surprising for a Gasparini team. Obviously, they've been known to be you know absolute shot monsters over the last you know two three years. Um, but um, yeah, not going into this game in, in the greatest of form, and obviously Juve have been known to be grind out results this season. However, mm. they do have. You know a lot of uh, you know a lot of tricks up their sleeve. Um, obviously, Luis Muriel has probably been the kind of outstanding yeah. performer. Or at least he's been the headline grabber this season. Just his goals to minute ratio is just kind of just stupid, really, isn't it? Like 62 minutes 
um, taking 5.5 shots per 90. That's a goal every 62 minutes. So, um, so yeah, really, you know, offering you know Atalanta a lot of bang for their buck. Obviously, cost it cost them about 18 million euros. Um, wasn't great during his spell at Sevilla, but really has come into his own um, this season. Obviously, um, we did actually speak about him a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? On um, on, on, yes. on this uh, on this show, signings. but um, and obviously Papu Gomez has also been in great form. Four goals, five assists, 0.78 expected goals and assists per 90. Ilicic as well, four goals, one assist, 0.89 expected goals and assists per 90. So everyone is you know contributing towards um, you know their their great attacking output. Um, but one guy who's gone a bit under the radar is Ruzian Malinowski, mm -hmm. who signed from Genk in the summer. Um, 26 years old, central midfielder, or can play a bit forward in the, in the, in the 10 role. Um, and just his overall game has looked really impressive this season. I haven't seen an awful lot of him, um, but uh, from what I've seen, very impressive. 2.1 tackles and interceptions a game, 4.1 shots, 3.4 key passes, 2.8 dribbles in uh, 100, 509 minutes. Sorry. So, um, yeah, they, at least going forward, they seem very, very solid. A lot of options, um, and yeah, I think obviously could cause Juve some problems. And it would be, you know, I mean, it would be great if, if Atalanta got got a result out of this. And it's not like Juve are running away with their lead either. Obviously, this poor run of form saw Atalanta drop to ten points behind Juve. Before that, they were three points behind them third. But obviously, Inter is still knocking on the door as well. So. <laughs> Um, I don't know. This could, yeah, this could be a really interesting matchup. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you got, what you think about Juve. Yeah, so. Hobbit, what are you making of them? Um, well, obviously, it's a, it's a strange one because Juve, they've won um, ten of their twelve um, Serie A games and they're unbeaten in sixteen matches in all competitions. But it's like, Sarri still doesn't really know his best side. Some of the players aren't really happy. He's benched, he's benched, um, not benched Cristiano Ronaldo. He's subbed him yeah. um, a few times now. And obviously, as the key man, you don't really want to anger Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> but like I said, they're unbeaten in their last 16 games. And to be fair, stats-wise, they're not doing that bad. They've had 18.4 shots per game. That's the fourth in the league. 6.7 shots on target. That's the second. And they have conceded 10.9 shots, which is the best in the league. Mm. So they're not playing that bad. But at the same time, I don't think he's getting the best out of his players. Yeah. Like I said, Cristiano Ronaldo is their key man. He's only got five goals and one assist in 10 Serie A games. And although to the average man, that is good. That's fine, yeah. Yeah. Ronaldo, he should at <laughs> least be a, a bit more on that. Yeah. But Ronaldo did have a great international break. He scored a hat, an amazing hat-trick, as we saw. So we can kind of see it's, it's the system and maybe the way he's been played at Juventus that's not really working. But they do have other key performers. Pjanic, he's played 11 games, three goals and one assist. But yeah. he's the second top scorer joint with Dybala with three goals in the Juventus side mm. that should be known for a lot of goals. So yeah. that's kind of telling of their, them going forward. It isn't, mm. isn't going quite to plan. And with Sarri's persona, it doesn't seem like... we already seen it at Chelsea. He's very stubborn and he's a very, he, he likes to stick to his ways. So the fact that it's actually working and like their top of the league even though it's by one point it doesn't seem like he's going to switch it up really so i don't really know I, atlanta could cause them a few problems if, yeah going into this game 100 yeah. percent. i think they've got duven zapata back for this one as well which mm. is obviously hugely exciting for them despite luis muriel um playing so well in his absence i feel like zapata is probably the better all round forward but both equally lethal great to have a colombian duo just absolutely ripping it up up front mm. but yeah it does feel like the sort of fantastic defence of Juve, we haven't really seen them get going in an attacking sense this year, at least in the league. They've been better in the Champions League in parts, actually. Mm. Uh, meets an Atalanta side who will just rain down shots on them. But mm. unfortunately, they're missing Ilicic for this game, who is suspended with a red card. And they've got Malinowski as well, mm. who McCubbin mentioned, is also suspended. So two of their sort of key-ish men so far this year suspended. Juve have got Chiellini out and Piaka out as well with injuries. Obviously, Chiellini is a long-term injury that won't come as anyone come as a surprise to anyone. But as as we said before, Atalanta have a horrendous record in this game. Mm. They've never beaten them in 23 league meetings. But as McCubb said, did beat them 3-0 in the Coppa Italia in January. So we're hoping, you know, fans of a Serie A competition this year that maybe Atalanta can get some points in this game. Uh, lads. Time yep. for a prediction. McCubbs, what do you think? I'm going to go for a score draw. I'm going to go for 1-1. 1-1. <laughs> oh, I was going go, to go for 1-1 one, one I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to all then. I'll go to all. You're going to 2-2. I was thinking about 2-1, yeah. And you're yeah, saying 1-1. I'll go 1-1, yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to go an absolute goal fest. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be three to Atalanta. No, no it's, it's not. Did you yeah, not hear what I just said tough. about them scoring more than one goal? <laughs> yeah, I know, but not this time. Not this time. They're going to lose. They're going to concede by. They're going, yeah, they're going to concede three. So fi finally, the, finally, the first, finally, a first Atalanta win. Yeah. Finally wow. a first Atalanta win and finally a first Juve defeat of the season. You heard it's it really in the first. Interesting. Interesting. Come on, come on. Yeah, Saturday 2pm. Tune into that. Uh, but yeah, guys, I'm afraid we're not going to do quick fire questions this week. I'm afraid we have been ridiculously busy. As I said before, we've had to film this on a Thursday night. There's a lot of people out of the office. We've got people in Barcelona. We've got people moving into their house. We've got people going to Bury tomorrow. <laughs> yep. It's absolutely crazy. And we've actually got Joe coming in after this to film, film We Need to Talk. And we've already overrun by about 15 minutes. So we've got to go. Uh, but guys, what should they go do now? Um, I, I've, I'm, I'm tired of saying this, but I mean, it's the only <laughs> thing I'm really pointing to at the moment. Go and watch uh, Notts County Journeyman. Do it. Myself and James went up to Nottingham, uh, visited Notts County, um, and did our best to tell their story. Um, there's going to be a lot more uh, of uh, the, this series uh, to come as well. This is only the first one, but go and check that out. See if you like it. Let us know if you like it. Give it a like. Give it a comment. You know, even if you don't like it, let us know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone's constructive feedback. Yeah, exactly. Um, anything that is to do with football daily. So you're a football daily squad goals. Just check it out because yeah. our content is great. Nice one. Nice like one. That. And download uh, <laughs> yesterday's podcast uh, as well. Went out actually this morning. So yeah, yesterday for you guys on Friday. Sonny was on um, that, wasn't he? Sonny was on that talking about Spurs. Oh ah, yeah. Actually stayed quite cool. He was very cool, calm, like collected. Uh, when he was an act. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> he actually had this new voice. It was like, yeah, not yeah, his, his radio yeah. voice. Isn't it? His radio voice came out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye. Later.